Hello, and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Recently, some viewers wanted me to talk through more challenging dispatch scenarios. So I am here to do that today. I'm going to be making a two part series. So this is part one of the series of various challenging situations for dispatchers and me unpacking those. Um, the first one, let's say you're a dispatcher and you call a member of the flight crew to talk with them before the flight. And you notice that that flight crew member is difficult to understand, doesn't seem to be responding to your questions, maybe sounds like mumbling, and you can't understand what they're saying. After verifying it's not a bad phone connection, which it could be, you realize that something is wrong with the crew member. They are somehow incapacitated. So what do you do about that situation? And what would you say when the crew member asked to send, you should send the dispatch release so we can go? In this scenario, I'm going to be go on a limb and say something is incapacitating the crew member. If I've established there's not a communication problem, maybe I called them back, made sure it's not the phone connection. I, first of all, might ask to speak to the other crew member and, or I might try to call the other crew member directly find out what's going on, ask if there's anything unusual being observed with the other crew member. But if I, as a dispatcher, have concerns as to the safety of a flight and the flight hasn't departed yet, as a dispatcher with operational control, which is my exercise of authority over initiating, conducting, and terminating a flight, according to the FAA, it is on me then to decide that that flight cannot be operated in a safe manner really doesn't matter why. I don't know. Maybe the crew member, hopefully they're not drunk. Hopefully they're not on drugs or anything, but maybe they have a medical problem coming. I don't really know. But as a dispatcher, if I am worried about the ability of the crew that is scheduled to do the flight to actually conduct the flight safely, I would decline to send the dispatch release. And I would notify my supervisor of that immediately so we could assess what is going on with the flight. Perhaps we get a replacement crew, perhaps we take those crew members offline, but I would not send the dispatch release. So if somebody asked me to send the dispatch release for the flight and was demanding it, I would just say, I'm going to work on that and I'm going to have to get back to you. I don't really have to be super upfront with the crew directly on what I think they might have going on, but I also don't want to send the dispatch release. Okay, so scenario two. Uh, your flight's going to leave and maintenance control calls and says, all right, we have an MEL added. It's 21-1. That's the air conditioning pack. And now we only have one air conditioning pack available. We can't go into super detail about this, but for the 737 anyway, this limits our altitude to usually flight level to five zero. And as I'm reviewing the dispatch plan, I'm looking at my dispatch release and I see, wow, we need like maximum fuel on board for that leg. So what am I going to do about that? Because it's already a long leg. And if now I'm limited to flight level 250, I'm going to need more fuel. That is not the optimum altitude for a Boeing 737 or any other jet that you're operating. So how does that affect my planning? What am I going to do with that? So I would say, well, number one, I could figure out a front maintenance control. Hey, is there any other aircraft we can take? I understand that the pack is inoperative, but is there another aircraft we can take? Maybe we can reflow that aircraft on a shorter leg where I don't need the length and all that fuel. But sometimes that's not possible. So if maintenance says, no, we can't, you know, that's the only airplane, or it's like at an outstation and I'm trying to move it back to a hub, that's all we have. That's all that's available. Okay. So uh, my default should not be like, let's cancel the flight. That's not really the best option for this type scenario. It might be required. It might be, but I could also be a little creative, think outside the box, um, maybe redo my flight planning and see if it's possible where maybe we don't have a full load of passengers. Okay. Um, possibly I could put some more fuel on board if it's just a weight issue 
initially, but if there is no more fuel capacity available in the airplane, like I can't put any more fuel in the airplane because of capacity or because of weight, another option I could decide to do, not popular, but stop perhaps in the middle of the flight for a refueling stop, at least we would still move the airplane. Assuming the crew is amenable to this, I could issue two different dispatch releases to go to a fuel stop and then get fuel and then continue on. Like don't offload or off do anything with passengers or anything else, but just plan a fuel stop. So that is a possibility if maintenance is not able to fix the item and we cannot choose a different aircraft. All right, scenario three. Uh, the crew calls and says, guess what? The baggage handlers have loaded all the bags into the aft cargo bin by mistake. Now, for the 737, airplane is pretty good for weigh and balance perspective. But if you load everything, I mean everything, in the aft cargo bin, sometimes we have a center of gravity problem. So, like a good dispatcher, I'm going to recalculate the weight and balance of the aircraft. But... In this scenario, I'm going to say, I found that the center of gravity stays within limits for the whole flight, from takeoff to landing to my destination, except if I have to go to the alternate, then I'm going to burn more fuel, and with a swept wing aircraft, sometimes the center of gravity is going to move significantly with fuel being burned. This is very frequent happening. So... We want the center of gravity to remain in the envelope the whole flight. But should I allow a flight to go, even if it's currently in CG and it should be within CG, but it will burn out of CG if the flight has to go to an alternate? Okay, this is actually a pretty easy scenario for me as a dispatcher. I can't let the flight go in that condition. It's just not safe. What if the flight really does have to go to the alternate? I planned an alternate because I needed an alternate. That means the weather was such that I needed an alternate. And so even if the weather was like pretty good, it wasn't really, you know, bad. If the flight has to go to the alternate for any reason, if it's gonna burn into a situation where we're burning fuel and we're going outside the center of gravity envelope for the airplane, it's not a safe condition. So I'm gonna have to stop the operation and request the crew to tell the baggage handlers, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to move some of those bags around. Now, the other option, maybe, some depending on the scenario, if we had not a full load of passengers, it's possible we could do a bunch of free upgrades, move some people into first class. It could be possible to shift the people around enough to move the center of gravity. But if the airplane is full, and all the seats are full. I can't move passengers. The only thing I really in this scenario could move is bags. So, okay. Um, scenario number four. Let's talk about the auxiliary power unit. So that's like a little mini baby jet engine in the airplane that we use for power for electrical power, for pneumatics, and for hydraulic power. It's also like a backup for in-flight issues. And let's say my airplane has departed. So here's a scenario where the aircraft's departed. The captain notifies me, the dispatcher, after takeoff using a cars or some other method that the airplane is having a problem where they were not able to use the APU, but they started the flight with the ground power unit, which is available at a lot of stations. So they might have a ground power unit, so we can power the airplane for a start. Once the one engine gets going, you can use that power to start the other engine. So that's cool. But they're already going. Um, the APU had failed. They started it with the ground power unit, and they added the APU to the minimum equipment list. Okay, so you check. I'm going to check down line and see where else is that airplane going to be operating today. I better make sure that anywhere else they're going, we have a ground power unit available. But as I'm doing that checking, I find that one of the stations does not have a working ground power unit. This is actually based on a real scenario that I did encounter where we had aircraft going somewhere that did not have a working ground power unit. Now, if you get somewhere and there is no ground power unit, and your airplane does not have its auxiliary power unit available, it's super important 
that you don't shut down the airplane fully. If you shut down the airplane fully, then you have no way to start one of the engines that you can then use power to start the other engines. A lot of stations have electrical power on the ground and they might have the big hose to air condition the cabin, that's cool, but it's a special pneumatic ground power unit used to start most transport category engines for turbojet engines or turbofan engines. So it's a really big problem if your crew is en route and we do not have one of these ground power units available. So in this scenario, it's probably warranting me calling the crew by voice. Maybe I use satcom, maybe I use cell call. At the very least, I've got to get a message through to them. Don't shut down the engines fully. You can shut down one engine and it is possible at many companies to do what we call like a hot loading. People on the ground don't like it, but if you keep one engine operating, it does burn some fuel, but at least we still have that engine operating to then start the remaining engine or engines and we aren't dead. Because if you shut down the airplane with no working ground power unit, the pneumatic start unit, we have a major problem. So I'm gonna make sure that that message gets through, possibly even call down the line and talk to the station personnel, the ground personnel and say, hey, make sure this flight does not shut down. Because if they do, it's gonna be a problem. Basically, you'd have to bring in a ground power unit by truck, which is going to incur a big delay. All right, so let's do one more scenario number five, and then I'm going to make another video covering more scenarios and release that later. But let's say you're monitoring your flights and you see that there's a flight that you had dispatched to do a ferry flight. So ferry flight, we're just moving an airplane around, no passengers on board, just the flight crew and they are operating and you see them level off in cruise flight at much more, much lower altitude than planned. At least it seems that's going on. You try to message them with ACARS and the ACARS, the text message that you're sending is not being responded to. So you're kind of starting to get concerned here. Calling ATC, ATC says, oh, the crew had a pressurization issue and they have leveled the flight at 10,000 feet. They're going en route. So what do you, you know, the ATC just says they're okay, but they're going en route at 10,000 feet. Let's say I, as a dispatcher, had flight plan them at 35,000 feet. So what do I do in that kind of scenario? All right, well, number one concern, if we are flying around at a lower altitude than I planned, we're flying at 10,000 feet and I planned at 35,000 feet, we're going to burn a lot more fuel. So it was a ferry flight. Maybe we have enough fuel on board to do that. I'm going to immediately get in my flight planning software and check the fuel burn, see what is going on. Um, so let's say I do that and I find the flight is going to burn into its required 45 minute reserve if it continues to go at 10,000 feet. Now what do I do? Remember, I tried to get a hold of the crew using ACARS and they never actually answered me. That's why I actually called ATC to find out what is going on with my flight. So this is a scenario where I'm getting kind of worried now because if the flight is going to burn into its 45 minute reserve, we are going to be landing really low on fuel. And I am gonna continue, if it was me, to try to reach the flight, try to contact the flight, try to figure out, can I get a message through to them because I want them to land somewhere else. And hopefully it's somewhere I can land where we can do some maintenance on the aircraft. I'm going to be evaluating that, talking with maintenance control about where we could have the flight divert. But I can't allow that flight to continue. I don't want it to continue on a scenario where it's going to burn into its reserve as it gets farther and farther along because it's flying at so much of a lower altitude. So this is a scenario where, you know, I'm going to try everything to do that. Now, if I can't reach them to tell them I want you to divert to another airport that is closer to get fuel and repairs, then it may even result to me contacting ATC and declaring an emergency for fuel on the flight's behalf. 14 CFR does give me that authority. In fact, it says the dispatcher shall declare an emergency for the flight if you can't contact the flight an emergency is occurring. So in this scenario, I have potential of having an emergency occur. So 
that would be one where it'd be very difficult. I understand the crew is working a problem with the pressurization. I understand it's probably not either not answering me. However, I do need to get a message through. And so that's why it would be important to maybe declare an emergency on the behalf of that flight. So I hope you enjoyed thinking through some scenarios with me. Um, what would you have done different? I would love to hear your comments. I am sure that there's some area that I did not consider. So put me a note in the comments. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me your weird scenarios. And I would love to have that discussion with you. And thank you for watching Aviation 101 with Laura. Check out these other videos that I've posted links to and watch for future videos about dispatch scenarios and decision making for dispatchers. Have a great day.